atmosphere is the promotion of polygamy. The rationale is that because most women want a man at a certain income level, and since the women who want those men vastly outnumber the men themselves, those women need to be willing to share them. In this video, I will highlight how many are misinterpreting the Bible to promote polygamy. I believe that the reason for the misinterpretation is threefold. First, they assume description is prescription. Second, they lack an objective standard. And finally, they ignore the example of Jesus. All right, now that's a lot to unpack. So let's get straight to it. All right. They assume that description is prescription, All right? The Bible describes many sinful and heinous things. And many confuse the description of these things with the prescription of these things. Okay, so what does that mean? If the Bible describes something, it doesn't mean that it also prescribes something. So prescription means that it lays it out as a standard for us to follow. The best example, and I'll, I'll before I, I get to the example, the Bible is is um, has various forms of literature, right? There's narrative, there's historical narrative, uh, there's poetic, uh, prophetic word, and then there's also didactic portions of the Bible, right? Didactic from the Greek didaskalos, which means to teach. Well, didaskalos is a teacher, all right? And didactic means to teach. So there are things that the Bible actually teaches, and it's also in the narratives, it's things that it describes. So one of the primary um, misinterpretations, even in amongst Christian circles, is to believe that something that's described is normative or prescriptive. Okay, so I'm going to show you places where polygamy is described. Right. So let's go to the scriptures. OK, this is uh, Genesis. Sorry, Genesis 29 uh, and tw and 30. And if you know anything about this story, this is a story where, where Jacob uh, takes a wife. Uh, well, he's, he's tricked into taking uh, <laughs> tricked into taking uh, two wives, first Leah, then Rachel. And then Leah and Rachel give him their servants, Bilhah and Zilpah. And then this is like one man with four women. OK, and everything that comes about is bad. Right. Not every well, Obviously, the kids, he gets the kids out of it, the 12 sons and then the daughter, Dinah. But if you read this, this chapter and you think that polygamy is something that the Bible prescribes, you're not reading it close enough. There is jealousy, sexual immorality, um, the sibling rivalry, all of these things uh, from Genesis 29 on even into 50 at the end of the book, you see that these things are negative. Uh, the results of polygamy are negative things. OK, it describes the polygamy because the Bible has to describe sin because men are sinners for all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Right. Romans 323. So if the Bible only described perfection, then the, the book would basically be the father the Son, the Holy Spirit, the end. But because men are sinful and the, the perfect man, Jesus Christ, had to come and redeem us. And I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself, right? I'm about to preach the gospel to y'all. Uh, but the description of these acts is necessary. We need to see how sinful man is because we need to see that Jesus comes in and shines a light on this darkness. That's the entire purpose, right? We need to see that. And this is why the Bible describes all of these wicked acts, because it's just telling the story of mankind in relationship to the ultimate man, Jesus Christ. All right. So polygamy is described, but mon polygamy is described, but monogamy is described. Genesis 2, 24. Therefore, a man shall leave his father and his mother and hold fast to his wife and they shall become one flesh. And then Jesus in Matthew 19, 4, when the disciples are asking him about divorce, he answers them. Have you not read that he who created them from the beginning made them male and female? Therefore, a man shall leave his father and mother and hold fast to his wife and the two shall become one flesh. The two shall become one male, female, man, wife. 
the new the 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 the, the genders are in there are in there man and male or female and the number two that's it no no polygamy right no more than two man woman okay so they are no longer two but one flesh They're what therefore god has joined together let not man separate and then first corinthians 7 2 paul picks right right up on this but because of the temptation to sexual immorality each man should have his own wife and each woman her own husband not plural right man should have his own wives no it doesn't say that and a woman should have her own husbands it does not say that both are denied right and then uh, ephesians 5 uh, starting at verse 22 i won't read that entire thing to you but you can see here that the bible prescribes monogamy it prescribes it they may describe polygamy so don't get confused whenever you see the bible saying don't confuse description or assume description means prescription in the scriptures okay so the second thing I believe that they don't have like the manosphere doesn't have a standard. You have various pockets. There are some who are doing uh, who who hold to tra two traditional values, but some will assume that, hey, in my country, we do th things this way. Right. Men, women need know they need to share a man. Right. What's the objective standard? OK. By what standard? Now, this is the only time I'm going to tell you. Right to to ask us ask the same question that a pharisee asked right so matthew 21 23 this is the question you should begin to ask and when he entered the tip the temple and the chief priests and the elders of the people came up to him this is jesus as he was teaching and saying this is the question by what authority right are you doing these things and who gave you this authority you should ask that same question the question should come up by what authority do you do you are you teaching that polygamy is good by what standard are you teaching that polygamy is good because you cannot get get an ought from an is just because it's described just because polygamy happens doesn't mean doesn't mean that it ought to happen we need to just like uh, in Britain, there is a standard inch, right? We measure all inches against that inch. We know what an inch is because we can go to that sure standard. Hey, this is the inch, right? We know what a perfect circle is so we can know what imperfect circles look like, right? The, the perfect circle, right? We know what we know what the perfect is. So we should be able to, like we as Christians, we know the perfect, right? The perfect has come, right? We know Jesus Christ is the perfect man. So we know that we have an objective standard to point to. Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life, right? Jesus Christ is the standard. We should ask people in the manosphere who would promote polygamy, by what authority are you doing these things? What authority are you, are you giving so that we, that we should follow your example of the pursuit of polygamy? Why? Right. And again, we as Christians, right, we know we, we, that we've been given the apostles who wrote the words for us, the prophets, the evangelists, those who kept who, who uh, preached the message, the shepherds and teachers. Those are pastors so that we would be equipped for the work of ministry, for building up the body of Christ till we all attain to the unity of the faith and then the knowledge of the son of God to mature manhood to the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. And this is the important part so that we may no longer be children tossed to and fro by the waves and carried about by every wind of doctrine, by human cunning, by craftiness and deceitful schemes. It may sound good. It may sound pragmatic, right? Because there are more, there are more women who want high value men than pragmatically. It may sound good that, yeah, of course you should have to share. You should share them. If you want one, you're going to have to share it. But that's not that's that's pragmatism. Just because it is that way doesn't mean that it need that it ought to be that way. You cannot get an ought from an is. Is is just a description. Ought is a prescription. We have the standard. We can go to the short anchor of the word of God. And then so doing, we can shine a light on the manosphere when they are incorrect. And this is one of the areas where they are very incorrect and the women who are being told this rightly push back they should not want to share they know that they know that something is wrong with that they shouldn't have to share right and that's why you get pushback even from the 304s 
they won't they don't want to many of them they don't want to share they will balk at that right because something in them the conscience conscience that they have teaches them that they should not be willing to share okay monogamy is described all right that monogamy, uh, monogamy is prescribed and that we have that standard from the scriptures okay so again and we know that right it says here in ephesians 4 17 don't walk in the futile, futile, futility of the minds of the Gentiles, right? Their understanding is darkened. They're going to pragmatism. They're going to look at it and say, well, yeah, this works. So let's try it. It works for me as a man. I get as, get as many as, you know, right? As, if, if you're a polygamist, yeah, you, you think you're thinking of all the benefits that it, that it gives to you, right? But what does it do to society? What does it do to, um, to the women and the children and generations that, you know, that are coming after you? Yep. All right. And they're just greedy to practice every kind of impurity. Right. That's what even uh, uh, Ephesians continues in verse 19. They become callous and have given themselves up to sensuality. Polygamy is one of those things. Right. Greedy to practice every kind of impurity. And even Philippians and Paul picks it up. They're in this destruction. Their God is their belly. Right. The, the belly is the seat of all those desires. They glory in their shame with minds set on earthly things. All right. And finally. The example of Jesus, John 14, 9, Jesus saith to him, have I been with you so long, Philip, and you still do not know me? Whoever has seen me has seen the father. And how can you say, show us the father? Jesus is the ultimate man. Only that you would have to be a lunatic as a man to say that when you see me, you've seen the father in heaven. There's only one reason that Jesus can make that claim. He is deity. He is of the same substance as the father. Right? He is co-equal in, uh, in his being with the Father. That is the only way he could make that claim. Okay? And in Hebrews 4.15, 4, 4, For we do not have a high priest who is unable to sympathize with our weaknesses, but one who in every respect has, respect has been tempted as we are and yet without sin. So even though he was, he's God-man, he was tempted the same ways that we were, and he never sinned. He's perfect. Right? So what did this perfect man right, do? when it comes to polygamy and monogamy. All right, well, I'm glad you asked that question. John 3, 28, you yourselves bear me witness that I said I'm not the Christ. This is John the Baptist speaking, but I have been sent before him. The one who has the bride, one who has the bride is the bridegroom. Jesus has a, a bride. The friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly at the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is now complete. And then in Matthew 9, 14, the disciples of John came to him, the John the Baptist. Why do you why do the Pharisees fast? But your disciples do not fast. And Jesus said to them, can the wedding guests mourn as long as the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them and then they will fast. And then in Revelation 19, then I heard 19, 6, then I heard what seemed to be the voice of a great multitude, like the roar of many waters and like the sound of mighty pearls of thunder crying out, hallelujah, for the Lord our God, the almighty reigns. Let us rejoice and exult and give him glory for the marriage of the lamb has come and the bride has made herself ready. It was granted to her to clothe herself with fine linen, bright and pure. Okay. And for the linen is the righteous deeds of the saints. That's us. Those, that's, we're the saints. We are the bride. We are Christ's bride. And what has he done? Has he been with many other women? Has he been with any other bride? No, he's, as Ephesians says, let me go back. I'm going to go back to Ephesians and show you. Husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church and gave himself up for her, that he might sanctify her, having cleansed her by the washing of water with the word so that he might present the church to himself in splendor without spot or wrinkle or any such thing that she might be holy and without blemish. And then we're told to do the same thing in the same way. Husbands should love their own wives as their, love their wives as their own body. One wife. Jesus Christ has had one bride throughout all time. And he has been he has sanctified her, died for her, redeemed her and uh, cleansed her and brought him to himself. And ultimately in Revelation, that will be the beautiful picture of us being with him forever polygamy is against every 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 area that you can look in the bible every uh, every metric that you can use whether it's, it's only polygamy is only prescribed described is never prescribed it is not it is a, it violates the standard that god has set up it's pragmatic 
and it doesn't it doesn't adhere to what the scriptures say and then it ultimately violates Jesus's example okay and I'm just gonna leave you with that all right don't forget to like comment and subscribe and I'll see you all in the next one and until next time be on alert stand firm in the faith act like men be strong